Hello, 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 and welcome to session number two uh, on technical analysis. It's just gone 3 p.m. here in London on the 11th of October. If I can just get uh, some of you to type a Y in the chat room or a yes, let me know that you can hear, you can see okay. Thank you, Harry, uh, Marco, Adrian, loads of you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great to have you all uh, with us today. We'll get started very, very shortly. Uh, really looking forward to to the session. Uh, you've got use, obviously, of the chat room where you can chat with each other and also the Q&A uh, as well, where I can pick up any questions uh, as well. The The first session that we had, of course, was on uh, sort of an introduction to investing. Uh, you can watch that uh on repeat as many times as you want uh and of course same for this one if you are watching on demand hello and welcome uh as well we're gonna get a little bit more practical today uh next week's session is on fundamental analysis and then we're gonna bring everything together uh to talk more uh, about building a portfolio um as usual please do take a moment just to have a quick look over the disclaimer, uh, Javier or Javier, uh, I'll post the links to the first session, the third and fourth session to you all very shortly. Let me know where you're all logging in from. Um, I appreciate some of you are uh, logging in uh, from different parts of the world. And then some of you, it's very, very late. We've got Scotland, we've got Sri Lanka, Thailand, Portugal, uh, Barcelona. Amazing. Dublin, Bahrain, Argentina, Istanbul, Liverpool, Athens, Philippines. Anyone from Teddington? Anyone in southwest London? That's where I am based right now. Uh, but we'll look, without further ado, we'll we'll get going. Uh, as as I said, please do use the, the Q&A for any questions uh, that you have. Uh, and if you do leave, need to leave early, you can watch on the same link that you joined on. Um, technical analysis then. Technical analysis. How many of you at the moment use it in your trading or investing? There will be some of you, I'm sure, that think it's absolutely useless. And there's no harm in that, by the way. At the end of the the four-part course, you want to have a greater understanding about everything, but also a greater understanding about the route that you want to go down. So for some people, technical analysis is great. Some it's not so. Some use it in correlation with a fundamental approach. It's what works best for you. And I will talk throughout this webinar about how you can get to that point. Um, but look, we're going to go through everything. And as I said, watch things over and over. We do this course every quarter as well, minor changes. So feel free to come back as many times as you want. And look, here at eToro, we want to put on as much free education as possible. So afterwards, send me a message on email or Twitter if you want a session on something in particular or you want me to talk about something in particular on the latest podcast, more than happy to, to do that. Okay, technical analysis. I can hear some of you saying, Sam, get on with it. Technical analysis is an approach to investing or trading where you can examine previous price market data to help forecast future potential opportunities. So when I use technical analysis, I know that other traders and other investors are thinking it's happened before, so it could happen again. OK, and the reason why we can go higher or lower is because other traders and other investors think the same thing. So that's the first thing I really want us to, to note down, to write down. It's just a load of people, a load of investors, a load of traders thinking it's happened before. It could happen again. OK. Now, let's just talk about the pros and cons. Uh, and please feel free to, to put in the chat any others that you think are, are worthwhile. But we'll start with the positives of technical analysis so if you're looking at a certain stock let's just say tesla or uh, a certain indice market like the s p 500 which we know is the most traded and most invested market in the world you might think well where can i actually enter if you want to be maybe more short term you want to be more precise with where you get in if you're holding something for a number of years it doesn't really matter too much but with technical analysis, we can identify places to get in and then also out of these investments. It can be really useful for risk management as well, and also as a guide for sentiment. Let's say we are talking about Tesla and suddenly it goes to the highest price it's been in six months. 
what do you think sentiment would be like? Do you think it's going to be good or do you think it's going to be bad? Chances are it's going to be good. We've broken to a new high. The headlines write themselves. People were happy. Sentiment is good. And you can see that on a chart. And I will be sharing my chart throughout this. But it's important that we can sort of get a guide for how people are feeling. Whereas if we break to a new low, i.e. the market is the lowest it's been for a week or the lowest it's been for a month, people start getting a little bit worried. Sentiment changes and you can have a view that that particular market might start to go a little bit lower. And also it can give you another reason to enter the trade or potential investment. So these are so, some of the, the pros, the positives of using technical analysis. However, there are definitely some cons and this is part of it. We want to create that balanced side. We're not saying, you know, session two, you have to use it. It's just that if you wanted to, these are the benefits, but also let's be aware of when it's not as useful. So you may have a great setup where a certain market is trading at the same level as it was a year ago. And from that point a year ago, it went up 30%. Okay, great. People might be thinking that the same thing can happen because technically the last time it did, it went up. However, if there are new fundamental drivers, there's new data out there, there's new headlines, then there could be further downside. So we need to be on be aware that fundamentals will outweigh technicals so the question in the chat there from yasmin what what do you mean by fundamentals that's just analysts and investors and us just putting all the data we have to then make a decision if something is over or undervalued okay so let's say we have uh, a company that we're all looking to invest in okay and i want everyone to put an, put an answer if you think you have one so we want to invest in company a the last time it traded where it did, it went higher. Technically, it looks amazing for another move to the upside. But let's say a headline comes out that the CEO has been in uh, involved in a scandal and is going to have to step down. What do you think would happen to that price of the of the, the, the share price? Do you think it'll go lower or higher? Okay, lower, drop, go down. Perfect. Okay, look, we're all on the same board. So that's when you would say, technically, it doesn't matter because there's new news out there. Okay, great. Perfect. Uh, we also need to think, well, are other investors also looking at the same thing that I am? Okay, so now we need to be aware of, let's make sure we're looking at the right things. And that's obviously going to be one of the purposes of today. Uh, obviously, if there's just a big announcement about it to happen, technically, you don't really want to be looking at the chart uh, as well. Okay. Perfect. So for those that said higher, you, you, I mean, listen, in the long term, you could be right. But because of that uncertainty, people would be selling. Okay, the CEO is involved in drama. What else could happen? Okay, re regardless of what technically it looks like, chances are people are going to be selling as well. M people in the market hate, hate uncertainty more than anything. Now, when we look at uh, charts, well, actually, I've got a question for, for you. Um. Why would why would people look at a chart, a candlestick chart? Why do you think what what information can it show us? Why would I why would you why would you look at a chart or something? Perfect, Marco. Historical data, spot trends, history of movement shows the lows and highs, price action. Perfect. Love these answers, uh, and 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 that is it. We're just getting uh, a view of what has already happened. If you were to buy a house. And you see, and it's sold every year. I know that doesn't happen. But if you see it keeps going lower and lower and lower and lower, chances are there's a reason for that. And it's probably not a great house to buy. Whereas if you see over the course of history, it goes up and up and up, you can start to make a decision. It's probably the right thing to do. Now, however, there could be new news out. And that's when things can change. But that's why people would look look at charts. Uh, remember, on your uh, eToro virtual account, uh, on your Toro account, you've got a virtual portfolio, um, a, a SIM account where you've got $100,000, which you can use, you can play around with. But we got we get to see a lot of information on this chart. Now, this is the S&P 500. I appreciate to, to, to many of you, this will just look you know ridiculous. You won't have a clue what it looks like. And I've obviously, I've been there. Um, but hopefully over this uh, webinar and the coming ones, it will start to make a little bit more uh, sense there. 
as well. So we'll come back to that. But candlesticks, what do they show us? The high, the low, where we opened, where we closed. And what you've got to think about is everyone that looks at these charts can see the same things. Okay. So now I've got a question for you all. Okay. I'm just going to remove everything from uh, the chart here and I'm going to draw one line. Okay. I'm going to draw one line on my chart, which is the high that we had on the 27th of July. Kieran, I can't believe you just put that comment in there. Okay. So that's the high from the 27th of July. If price continues to go up to that point, Okay, so we continue to go higher. What what do you think people are going to do? Let's say we all buy right now, price goes up. What do you think we're going to do when it hits that blue line? And and by by the way, they could, I'm I'm more than happy to see every single answer here. Okay, got I oh, love love these answers. Sell, take some profit. Sell, 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 take profit. New entry, yeah. What we got to think about is, as technical analysts, the last time we were there, look what happened. We went all the way lower to that point. And that's that's just the, the first thing we can think about. Last time we were there, we went lower. Why can't it happen again? Okay, that's what we got to be thinking about. And actually, what you can see um, throughout history, just over this year, look how many times things like that happens. Hit this blue line, we go lower. Hit this blue line, we go lower. Hit that blue line, we go lower. And that's just other people looking at the same thing as we are. Okay? So I hope that's a little introduction. But for those people that said buy or wait for it to break and then buy, I, I, I'm fine with that. Okay, let's crack on. Let's move on. Support and resistance. Okay? Now, if I were to, uh, you know, say just, just try and understand one thing, from uh from this webinar I, I i would really focus on understanding support and resistance um support is a price or a level or a zone in the market where there have been more buyers than sellers so price it stops price going lower think of support like a floor that just prevents price from going lower resistance is the opposite a level or zone where there have been more sellers than buyers. Think of it, a resistance level like a ceiling that prevents price from going higher. Now, we also need to think about a support point uh, and, and maybe write this down. It's a re I think it's personally a really good way to remember it, okay? Think of support like a, a lake of ice, okay? It's frozen over. If you stand on it once, you're going to be fine. If you jump again, you're probably still going to be fine. But if you keep jumping... What's going to happen? Likelihood is you're going to break through. The ice is going to break. So that's the way to think of support. The more times it gets hit, the more likely it's going to break. And same with resistance. If you were, and obviously you're not going to do this, but if you were to get a hammer and just hit your ceiling once, it's going to be fine, most likely. Twice mm, might, might, might make a little dent, but then eventually you're going to break through. Okay, so the more times we test the support or resistance level, the more likely it is to break, okay? And when support breaks, it can turn to resistance. And when resistance breaks, it can turn to support. And this is just the psychology of the market, okay? Are other people thinking about it? Now, in technical analysis, there are different time frames, aren't there? You can see on your platform, you've got one minute, five minute, 10, 15, 30, one hour, four hour, one day, one week. Question for the chat. And and I'm not calling anyone out that ever gets a question wrong, uh, an answer wrong, because it's it's great that you're interacting. What time frame do you think holds more weight? What do you think more people would look at, the short time frame or the long time frame? Let's get some answers in. So we got daily. Yeah, I mean, some people being specific, fantastic. Daily, one minute, four hour, long, 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 long. I would say about seventy percent, and that's a random number that's plucked out of thin air are saying long. Yeah, the higher the time frame, the more important for us. Okay, that's not to say you can't trade on a short time frame. You can. The higher the time frame, more important. Think everyone's looking at that. If, if look, Imagine you're a Bloomberg, you're a CNN, you're a Financial Times. You're not going to tweet out uh, the S&P has just made a new one-minute high, are you? You're more likely to say the S&P 500 has made 
uh, that always that is trading the highest it has been for six months. The longer time frame, the more eyes on it. The big players are looking at it. Okay, so when we look at a stock or a market, whatever it might be, the higher the time frame, the more important it is. Okay, but Arnold's got a great point here. It does depend on your trading strategy. Okay, it does. But more people will be looking at the long time frame. I personally trade off a four hour. Each person can do something different. But good question. Uh, answers there does depend whether you're a trader or an investor. A, a general rule of thumb with any sort of trading and investing question, the answer can always be it does depend. OK. But yeah, support resistance. If you're going to make one note from here, uh, the longer the time frame, the more significant the level is. And when support breaks, it turns to resistance and vice versa. Why do I do four hour? It just fits in well with my lifestyle. If you want, I work full time. I look at the markets in the morning. I can't, you know, trade all throughout the day. So on a four hour time frame to stay in the market for a, a one day, two days at a time, just makes more sense to me. But look, I can see a few of you just sort of talking about the, the way you look at the market, Stuart, 15 minute conjunction with the hour. I like that as well. I like that as well. Next up for us, then trend lines. Um, trend lines are easily recognizable. Uh, easily recognizable. I think, you know, that that's it's worth saying when they're easily recognizable, that that's when we really consider them, I would say. Uh, but the, the the point to make is we need at least three highs or three lows to really connect it. If it only has two, it's not a trend line that we look at. Okay. We want them to be obvious. I need to think. Is every other trader looking at the same thing here? If it is, then it's important. Okay, the higher the time frame, the better. And actually, what we saw with the S&P recently, and again, let me just zoom out. This could be any market, by the way, was a trend line from October last year to here. And you can see we got one test, two, three, and then it breaks through. But you can see just how strong it was people were looking at that trend line and therefore it acts as support there's just diagonal support or resistance zones uh as well okay so trend lines are something to consider and if your trend line breaks it's the end of the trend isn't it there's no guarantee of course it goes all the way low or all the way higher but it's just something for us to think about so again if you're making notes trend line it needs at least three tests free highs and lows for us to actually consider it indicators um trading indicators are popular mathematical tools and and the good thing is they're all worked out for you okay so you don't need to calculate them yourself uh, on the toro platform there's loads of tools which we'll talk about in the moment but they can help predict future price movement and uh, and, and and in those different markets that you might look at now a lagging indicator will confirm whatever market conditions you're looking at. Whereas a leading indicator can potentially provide trading signals for future price action. So again, if you're looking at a stock, it might show you something that could happen or that's something that already has. Just a little bit more confirmation. Another reason for you to maybe take the investment or even get out of the investment. That's also important. Okay, there's plenty of stocks that when they break certain levels, you can say, I don't want to be in this anymore. Okay. For example, you know, let's have a look at uh, a stock that I'm sure many people uh, do trade or have looked at. Has everyone heard of Alibaba? Quite an interesting, uh, interesting market. Oh, let me just add that to my watch list. Baba. What is on here? Where is it? Give me one second just to bring it up. Okay, Alibaba, um, you know, trading quite low considering to where it was. Okay, let's just remove everything. Now, what happened here? You can see. Oh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Look at this. Okay, really interesting area in the market. Back in, what year was that? 2018. You can see we went all the way higher. Look at that, all the way higher. Price comes down then. And look what happens when we break that area of support. So we can see here, there's an area we went higher. We then break it and it turns to resistance. Support goes higher. 
breaks resistance. So a lot of investors would have said, okay, if price goes below there, I don't want to be in it anymore. Okay, sentiment has changed. And you can see what's happened since then is it's come under significant pressure. Now, what do you think? Again, answers, answers in the chat. What do you think happened? What do you think you would do? What do you think traders would do if price gets back above our blue line? What do you think most people would be doing? We get above the blue line. What are they thinking? Okay, we've got a few buys, purchase, start buying, buy, buy, make, you know. Yeah, now let's have a look. Why? Why? Well, sentiment's changed. The last time we were there, we went lower and now we're above it. Okay, and that's just technical analysis. Sentiments improve. Yes, Kieran, love that. Okay, we'll come back to some examples shortly. Uh, trending indicators can help determine whether the market has entered into a new trend and strength of that trend. Oscillating ranging indicators can help determine when the market is overbought or oversold or when the market is ranging. So these things can be helpful. The, the main thing I want to, to point out is, I mean, what's, what's the saying? It's a UK saying, I think. So some of you might not know it, but I think the saying goes, too many chefs spoil the broth. And, and th I would think of the same thing with analysis. Too much analysis can spoil the investment. Okay. So if you were to have too many indicators on, they're going to tell you so many different things. So you're better off just keeping it relatively simple. But it's also important that we actually understand what the, each thing shows us. Analysis paralysis. Love that, Norman. Moving averages then. Uh, I think of these as floating support or resistance levels. Okay, so we've got support and resistance horizontally. Trend lines show us diagonally and moving averages will uh, will sort of flow over there. So moving average is a simple technical analysis tool that smooths out price data by creating a constantly updated average price. So if we're looking at the 200 day moving average, it's going to show us the closing price of each of the last 200 days and the average of that and how that changes. Hit it, support below it resistance and that's just how some people can look at it uh, okay so let's just go back to the s p 500 and anyone anyone want to answer what the the most popular moving averages are on the daily time frame feel free to have a little guess 250 52 yeah lovely yeah 200 50 100 you, you would say the most uh, most common there. Let's just have a quick look at moving average. I'm just going to change this to the 200 day moving average because that's what we're talking about. 200 day, and look what we see here. Okay, it's the blue. Let me just remove our trend line. But what you can see, and I'm going to get my annotation tool. When price comes to this point, we we get a reaction. Look at that. Goes lower, comes up, goes lower. Little bit messy here, but when we get above goes higher again relatively messy but some good reactions and look what happened just a few days ago price hits our 200 day moving average and goes higher now the important thing i want to say about this is i quite like the 200 day moving average not because it's just worked now but because it has worked previously as support or resistance and i know that other traders are going to be looking at this as well okay so when you look at using technical analysis, have a look back weeks, months before, and is it also respected? Because there's no guarantee it's going to work. We have to understand that. But if it's worked before, it could work again. That's the whole thing about technical analysis there. And moving averages um, can help show us, a, you know, if, if there's going to be a new trend, if it breaks, for example. Oscillators. Um, Oscillating indicators are best used in arranging markets, tend to be leading rather than lagging and determine whether the asset is overbought or oversold. Um, most popular, you've got stochastics, relative strength index and Bollinger Bands. I'll show you how to order, add those as well. They can help you with entry and exit points and they can enable you to identify a trend. Christopher, uh, I think this point is worth making. Zero connection to the reality and how the company is making profit or not. Absolutely. Absolutely. But as we'll go through the fundamental 
um, analysis webinar, there are times when certain markets are incredibly overvalued. And if you can find a place where other traders and investors might look to actually buy, you can incorporate that to help make a decision. And by the way, if you don't want to, that's fine. We'll show you how you can do it and why someone would, would do that as well. But yeah. Yeah, just think the psychology of the markets is is incredible. And, 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 you know, I don't want to set homework for anyone. But what really helped me at the beginning of my trading and investing career was just spending 15 minutes a day looking at charts. How did price get from A to B and testing myself? What do I think will happen if price gets to a certain point? OK, well, it, it went lower there from there before. It might do it again. And you just get more in tune with the markets. and It can really, really help. So have a quick look then at stochastics. Um, stochastic oscillator is a momentum indicator that shows the location of the close relative to the high low range over the set number of periods. The indicator can range from zero to 100. The closing price tends to close near the high in an uptrend and the low in a downtrend. OK, so I'll show you how to add this if you've got your chart anytime you sort of click the um, not the plus, the uh, the uh, the candle bar, the indicators, you can type it in. So whatever it is. So stochastics, for example. So I can add that on and it can show me periods where there might be a reversal in the market. Now, look, if we go through this, sometimes you're going to see it's going to work. Sometimes it won't. It's important to test things out. Have a play around with it. Use the demo account to try different trades. What works best for you? What time frame does it work on? We're going to talk a little bit later about the importance of journaling. But look, what you can see here is we reach that sort of oversold zone and then it, we start going up. OK, now if we take our vertical line and sort of mark that on the chart, look what happens. Oversold and then price starts going up. OK, and we also hit the 200 day moving average. So there might be people out there that say when stochastics go to 20, when it's on the 200 day moving average, that's my opportunity to buy. That could be your strategy. OK, obviously you want to test it over time and so on, but that's how you can use it in, in conjunction. And then on the flip side, you say, well, if it gets to 80, which it almost is, that's maybe my chance to sell as well. OK, so, yeah, it is trial and error to an extent for people, you know, that are, you know, starting out. But there are, you know, plenty of right ways to do it. Uh, and here we just we want to build help you real sort of, you know, build the framework, the right way to do it. Bollinger Bands, um, I quite like these. Uh, and I would, you know, again, look at your favorite stocks, your favorite markets and put them on and see how it works or it doesn't work. Bollinger Bands are a type of price envelope uh, developed by John Bollinger and can help determine whether prices are high or low on a relative basis. OK, so again, we'll just use the S&P 500, but again, it could be any particular market. Bollinger Bands, and you can see here, in theory, when it hits the bottom band, it's an opportunity for reversal. The top, a reversal to the downside as well. And you can see on the daily charts, relatively good. It's relatively good. So what we could say, what we could say, just based off this, if this was our only strategy, that when price hits the top blue line where my mouse is, we take profit. We take some profit. OK, that might be the way that we look at it. And when you look back in history, it's relatively well respected. You know, we've got people in the chat saying they love to use them. I, I think they're very good. And in trending markets, I like it. I think it's it's something to consider. However, it might not be right for you. It might not be, you know, the time frame that it's good on. You just don't have the time to trade that way. OK, but yeah, that's how you can add that on. And look, to be honest, there are so many different tools out there. I mean, look, if you click the indicators thing, you can scroll all the way down. And I've only just finished scrolling. There's so many things to look at, but I'm just going through the ones that I think are the most important, at least to understand. Okay. RSI, how many of you use RSI? Let me know. Um, I, I think I think a few people will. I think a few people will. I like it. When I look at charts on the long time frame, 
I, I want to see if, if, in theory, historically, it's overbought or oversold. Uh, RSI is momentum oscillator that measures the speed and change of price movements. Okay, so let's add that on again. I'm just going to remove everything here just to show you what it looks like. RSI, hopefully it will come up like that. Relative strength index. Okay, and look, again, this is this is quite nice. When it hits the oversold mark, which for this example is 30, price then goes up. Price finds a low and goes up. And then what we might say is if price gets to 70, that would be when we sell. And look, the last time it was at 70, look what happens to the market. It goes lower. It goes lower. Okay. And I, I, I want to stress, this isn't going to happen all the time. Okay. And part of trading, and we're going to talk about this later, is learning how to lose. Okay. But RSI, that's how you might look to use it. What I really would, would like everyone to do, especially who's new, is just try this out on your demo account. Whether that's with eToro or not, it doesn't bother me. But this is the way that you're going to get better. And by using the right tools and testing it, but also reviewing, which I think is one of the most important points. These are goals for improvement. So for many of you, uh, I'm sure you, you you probably don't know too much about me. So I'm, I'm just going to spend a moment just talking about how I got to this role. I worked at a, a prop trading firm in London, stones throw from the Bank of England. And I was a risk manager to help develop courses where people would come and trade and trade the company's money. And I would risk manage them. OK, so I've I've hundreds, if not thousands of, of traders that I've helped develop. OK, and what really, really helps speed up the process, because we all want we all start here to get to there and we want to get there as quick as possible. These are things that I would really you know, these are goals. Number one is just try to get into the habit of identifying where there could be a reaction in the market. OK, there might be it could go higher, it could go lower. Just test yourself out. And this is number two. This is goal number two. Start finding that you're predicting the outcome to be more right than wrong. OK, so someone give me. Um, hey, Stephen, hope you're doing well. Stephen was was someone that uh, I helped uh, along his journey. Um, someone give me a stock, any market, uh, any market in the world. The first one I see I'm going to do. Uh, oh, I think that was so far. Apple it was, actually. Cool. Apple it is. So, Apple. So, this is what I would do if I were one of you, okay? I'd uh, click on, for this sake, it's Apple, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just trying to find it the quickest way. Okay, where is it? Do you know what? I'm just going to do Microsoft because it's here, but I promise you I'm not cheating. Uh, <laughs> so, this is... Microsoft here. And this is what I would do. I would have a look at the chart on uh, sort of this time frame, And I'd say, okay, I think if price goes to 340.16, I think it's going to go lower. Okay. And that's all I do. I'd write that down on a piece of paper and come back and look in a week and start to see, am I getting in tune with the market? Because what you could have done, if we had this session a week ago, what would we say? We we might say, if price gets to three ten, now you may well have seen what happens. But why would if I said I think it goes to three ten and goes higher? Someone tell me why that would be the case. Why would that make sense? Okay, support level, yeah, uptrend. Support and resistance zone. And, and we can say last time that we were there, we went higher. And it look what happens. Price goes there and then goes higher. Now, I can, I can show you examples like this all day, but I could also show you examples where this doesn't work. So do remember that. But what I would say, I would test myself and say, I think if price goes now to 340, I think it's going to go lower because last time we were there, we went lower. Okay? Just as an example. But this is... That number one and two, test yourself out. Try get into the habit of at least predicting where these markets could react. Now, the third is going to take time. It happens with experience. How could I manage a trade? How could I look to get into an investment? 
Okay. But these are three steps, three goals to uh, to test yourself with. Journaling. Uh, does anyone that trades or invests use a journal? Be honest. Yes or no. There's no right answer. I just want to see what, what, what people are saying. Massive mix. I'd probably say 50-50 at the moment. Most no's. Trying. Did once. Rachel, if I didn't send it on Twitter, send me another message. Because uh, I, I had a problem with Excel and I fixed it now so I can send it. Uh, use to drop off. Now, I, I, I'm a massive believer in journaling. Um, and for, for, you know, in trading or investing, what is it? Is this a tool used to tra track the trades or investments that you've taken? Why would you use one? It can improve future performance when used correctly. What can it show you? It could show you your best products, the best strategy, the best time of the week, the day, the month, the year. So it might show you that when you trade oil, for example, if you trade it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in the afternoon, you do better than in any other period. And you see these things over and over again. I trade really, I'm, I'm really bad at trading very volatile products. Now I could have guessed that, but I can also see it from my early trading career. I struggled. Maybe the emotion, maybe a bit of FOMO, whatever it was, I was awful. But slower paced markets, when there wasn't big data out, I traded so much better. I traded so much better. And it's finding this out through the journaling that can massively help you. Errors when using the journey, because there are some, of course, some, you know, some people say oh, it takes too much time so you can be lazy. You can get into an investment and think, well, I didn't really want to get into that. So you can be dishonest and also do poor analysis, but it can really help. It can really help. So if anyone does want a copy of just a basic one that I've got on Google Sheets or Excel, uh, send me a message on Twitter. If you don't have Twitter, send me an email uh, and I'll pop my email in the chat at the end. And I'll be able to fire that over. I, I think it massively helps. Um, there are paid journals out there. Some traders swear by them. I don't think you need to pay for one at the moment. Uh, but uh, yeah, if anyone wants a copy, send over. More than happy to help. Make it more personal. What do you want to improve? Use it for goal setting. Important to note how you felt as well. I think you know it's important to say, when I was in this trade, I felt uneasy. Maybe that's because you're putting too much risk in it, or maybe it's a product that's moving too fast, too slow for you. Finding this all out at the beginning of your journey is, is super, super helpful. Uh, and look at Laz, uh, Laszlo. Sorry if I said your name wrong. You can export your trades from me to make a journal based on that. Fantastic. Uh, Charlie, uh, there's a company called Edgewonk. E D G E W O N K, Edgewonk where you can have there's paid journals and they, they give you all of the stats. It's amazing. How long are you in for your winning trades? How long are you in for your losing trades? All of this kind of stuff. It does it all for you. Um, I'm, I'm not a, you know, a paid member or anything. So that comes from the heart. Uh, that's it's good advice. Um, let's move on. Uh, actually, before we do, I've got questions. If anyone saw the next slide and took a screenshot, don't answer. Why do you think most people fail? when being more active, when they're trading or investing on a shorter time period? What reasons do you think? I've seen the word emotional so much here already. Greed, not patient, angry. <laughs> Fear, scared of failure, no exit strategy, lack of understanding, mindset. Okay, I love these answers. So good. Not setting take profit and stop loss. I like that too slow to act, no a real goal, no strategy, not reading, trading in the zone. That's a good book. Not sticking to plan. <laughs> marriage. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Now, before we go on to the next slide where pretty much all your examples are on there and we talk about how we can overcome them, for those that want to go down the route of, of being more active in the market, there's something that I think will massively help, especially if you're new, and that is on the demo account. And remember I said that demo account, the SIM account is to spend a week trying to lose money. Now that might sound crazy, but what it does, it gets you used to, to understanding how to lose money and what not to do. So if we were to, to go out and, and, and lose money for a week and that was our goal, what, what would you do? 
tell me what you would do to 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 do that i mean i i would trade at the wrong time i would trade really volatile markets i would take risks i would get into trades just before a data release i would get in a trade at 1 a.m i would trade bigger size than normal i would trade nap gas i would gamble i'd have no plan You'd use loads of leverage on a, a very volatile market. Buy it at the high, sell at the low. Love these answers. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's doing that, experiencing it, that you know, okay, well, that's not what to do. Because sometimes you need to go through that to actually have the lessons to then improve. So you can do that on a demo account. And then it's almost, well, let's do the opposite. So let's have a look at some of these reasons. I think pretty much every single one is set. Trading with too much risk. Now, when you trade, there's no reason to risk more than 2% of your account per trade. Any more than that, let's say you lose five trades in a row at 2%, you're already down 10%. So some people trade uh, less than that. I would never trade personally more than that. Now, investing is different. It's longer term. 5% on an investment is fine. 2% on a trade is okay. I'd probably have it a little bit less. Random trading, no structure. Create a clear plan and strategy. Now, if you're completely new, that's not going to be possible. But that's when you've got the demo account to try things out. Having a poor psychology, understand what investor, what trader you are. Are you better just being long term, buying into ETFs and, and sitting and holding? Or do you perform better when you are a little bit more active? Revenge trading. How many of us have done this? My hand's up. You've got into a trade, you lose, and you feel like you need to make it straight away so you get in just randomly and you probably get in bigger size than you did before yeah we've all done it it, it feels bad doesn't it uh create rules what do i do and let me know how, how does everyone you know overcome this what i do after a winning trade i go for a walk for 15 minutes after a losing trade i go for a walk for 15 minutes come back to my screen take all my analysis off and start again because if i win a trade i feel like well i've got some free money here if i lose a trade i think i've got to make that back walk away take some time off cool down go for it again go for a smoke i mean i don't recommend that <laughs> but i can understand the theory behind it you've got to be so regimented as a trader and investor have the rules have a process you want to get to the point where actually trading becomes so boring you're just doing the same thing over and over again not understand what you're trading uh focusing on too many markets at once this was an answer buying into resistance, selling into support, not having a journal, changing your strategy too often. So look, great, uh, great answers from all of you there. It makes me worried that I'm going to be out of a job soon. But yeah, though, these are the things, you know, why do most people fail and then how we can improve uh, there as well. Uh, understanding position sizing is important. Yes. Absolutely. And and Charlie, we will talk about that actually over the, the sort of build your portfolio one. I'll, I'll talk about that in, in a bit detail. How long do you hold a trade personally? I hold it until my target is reached or I'm stopped out of the trade or the fundamentals have changed. OK, so let's just get into it, an example here. OK, let's say I bought Microsoft on 28th of September because of this reason. My target would be 340. OK. Now, in theory, it could just go in between that range for for months. Could change, could go in there for months. It could do, of course, it could. And I would hold it if there's been no fundamental change that makes me really worried. I'm going to hold it until it gets to the target area that I've identified. Now, in an ideal world, it goes straight there. Fantastic, amazing. How good would that be? If not, stay in it. And there's an analogy I use in trading. Um, and Stephen, and I think there's a couple others that I've, I've helped teach along the way would maybe have heard this. Now, if you get on a train and I'm going to use Wimbledon as the example, because I think most people probably heard of Wimbledon because of the tennis. OK, Wimbledon to London is about five, six stops on the train. OK, so if I get on the train at Wimbledon, bear with me. I'm not going crazy. here. If I get on the train at Wimbledon to plan to meet people in london and uh, i ring them and say hey how's it going they're good yeah we're just in london cool perfect and then i get off the train in two stops in clapham for example that's just weird like why have i done that the plan hasn't changed whereas if i ring my friends and i say hey how's it going they go yeah london is is flooded we're now meeting at clapham 
I'm going to get off the train early. And it's the same with a trade or same with the investment. Why would you get out early if nothing's changed? Okay, now I appreciate it can be whole, hard to hold trades and investments. You know, I completely understand that. Experience helps. The trade journal helps as well. On my trade journal, I had a, um, a column. What happened after I got out of the trade? Because when I first started trading, I was winning more trades than I lost, but I wasn't making money because I was in a winning trade and it goes sideways for a bit and I take it out. I'd be like, well, it's green on the screen. No one got fired for making money. But what I would do is not hold it to my original plan. So then I said, what would happen if I actually stuck to my plan? And more often than not, that trade would, would, would work. So just try to remember that. What was your reason for getting in? Has anything changed? If not, hold it. You're doing yourself a, a disservice. Some people, especially on the shorter time frame, really struggle because they're looking at the chart the whole time. If you've done your analysis, you don't need to do that. Take a step back. There's only so much pain you can take as a trader. Um, here is just a bit of a, a, a strategy and process um, plan. Uh, one thing I, I would would recommend, anyone that sort of wants to know a little bit more um about the trading style on on our youtube page and on the digest and invest page there's uh i do something called trader talks where i do little lessons as well when it comes to trading how to create a process that kind of thing as well um so you can all check that out i'll put links in at the end uh but here is a, a sort of an example process it might be that you want to look at fundamental analysis what news is coming out what's the recent trend what are people focusing on anyone know what is coming out tomorrow in the market that can move everything. What headline, what data release coming out tomorrow? CPI. Jow, you say no idea, and that's absolutely fine. That's why you're here. CPI. Yeah. US inflation number comes out tomorrow. So let's pretend we're all in UK. Okay. And you're all, we're all in a room. I'm going to say, look, inflation is coming out at 1.30 p.m. Who would get into a trade at 1.20 Say yes or no. No. Good. No, two people have said yes. <laughs> no, we don't know what's going to come out. It's a massively volatile release. I'm, it's a gamble, isn't it? We don't know. Unless you've got insider trading information, you're not going to admit that, are you? It's a massive gamble. So even if you only trade technically, you've got to be aware of what's happening in the market. And it's the same ahead of an earnings release. Let's say you're in, you want to invest in JP Morgan. Their earnings are out Friday. Should I be investing right now? Probably not. Okay. Technical analysis, where could price react? Management, how can I manage the trade? And then let's review all of this as well. This is just a bit of a process that you can follow. Okay. Obviously, you want to make it personal based on what you can do, how much time you have there, you know, and so on. But uh, yeah, the, the important points, you know, stick to your rules. You've got the demo count to try things out, rinse and repeat. What worked for me? What didn't work? What did I feel comfortable doing and uncomfortable as well? Losing is part of the game. Have to understand this. Risk reward ratio is key. So when I first started investing or, or sort of trading in the sort of the short medium term, I traded with a two to one risk reward so for example i risked a hundred dollars to try and make two hundred dollars every time so therefore i only needed to win um you know above 33 percent of the time okay so not even 50 percent. we're going to lose trades this is part and parcel of it it's understanding that you know you cap the loss make sure your winners win Okay, so understanding risk reward is, is key. How much on your losing trades are you risking or your investments compared to how much you're looking to make? Okay. Volatility is a trader's friend. Uh, I mentioned I, I struggle with really volatile markets, but you need volatility. You need the market to move, right? From price to go to A to B. If the market doesn't move, our targets won't be reached. Time of the day is very important uh, as well. It's something for us to all understand. You know, if, the, if there's no one trading in the market, the market isn't going to move. When are the most volatile periods? I've covered all of this for you in, in videos that I'd recommend you all check out, actually. I'm just going to 
quickly uh, share with you. Uh, can you can you all see the YouTube shared screen? Let me know. Yes, you can. Thank you. Cool. So on this uh, on our YouTube page, you notice I've, uh, there's a few different videos. So how to trade certain events or not trade them. There's also finding an edge, the key times of the day, how to trade hard, uh, smarter, not harder. Journaling, how to handle losses. So I'd recommend check those out. And leave a comment as well, and I'll, I can get back to you if there's uh, any uh, further questions uh, as well. Mario, the, the same link that you clicked this, you'll be able to watch on demand whenever you want, as many times as you want. I'm never going to delete the uh, uh, the link, so you can watch that whenever. But yeah, volatility is important. It is important. Live analysis, uh, we've sort of done that already, um, but if anyone has a particular market, that they want looked at. I'm more than happy to do that. We do it on the webinars. Um, Apple, someone did say Apple. I've seen that too many times for me not to, to bring it up now. Apple, I think it might even be on my watch list already. It's not. Let's have a look at it. So first thing I would do, first thing I would do with with any market, and look, it's Apple, but in, in, in truth, it can be any market. And for this example, uh, we, we're using Apple. I would start on on sort of a longer time frame, just to sort of get an example of what's been happening, the trend that it's been on, and so on. But the daily daily chart is 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 as good as any. And what I'm immediately drawn towards here, if I just bring a horizontal line, what do you notice happens at this blue line? What are you, what's, what's everyone seeing here? Resistance. There's a gap. Yeah. Resistance going down. Yeah. Perfect. So next question, what, what happens to sentiment? Do you think if we get above it? What do you think? Bullish. Yeah. I'd, I'd agree with that. Now there could be a headline that comes out when that happens and it changes things. It could also go above and come, come down, but we're starting to believe, you know, you've all just said we feel a bit more bullish if it goes above. I'd, I'd say that. Why? Well, look, the last time we were there, we went lower. Time before that, we went lower, went lower. So the market clearly cares about this level. If we can get back above there, then fine. I feel a little bit more confident than actually the market could maybe go up. Now, next question. And you might, you might not be able to see clearly enough, uh, but where do you think if we do buy it above the blue line where where do you think that a, a big resistance would be and if and, and give me a number if you can see it no worries if you can't and we said people can one night loads of you saying 190s and i i feel like a proud father <laughs> of saying that because absolutely that area and look, some of you went so specific, by the way, and sort of did that sort of 18750, which I actually really like as well. I really like that. But that whole region around 190, absolutely. So we've now got a profit target where we could consider. And the reason why is because, well, it could just do what it did last time and go down. Look what it did last time. It went down. Last time it was there, went up, went down. Fantastic. We're starting to really get you know a hang here of just reading markets and and look if you um if you're not ready to invest or trade get a piece of paper get a word document write down these levels i think it will go lower from there i think it will go up good question here where would my stop loss be if that's if this was the trade that i would take i'd also want to protect it below a uh a support level I, i'll do another session on that but for example, the trade I would take, I would buy here. I'd take profit there and my stop loss would be there. So you can sort of see it's almost a two to one risk reward. A good question, but a bit more for uh, another day. But yeah, that's how I would look at it. And and what you've got to think about, if we're all seeing this, other investors, other traders are seeing that as well. So yeah, that's just how I would look at it. You know, I constantly on my on my Twitter account will will be happy to take people's questions and look at particular markets as well. Yeah. 
Perfect. Um, okay, let's go back um, to just have a quick look over the summary. If you use technical analysis, you need to know when to use it, the right time to use it, and also when not to use it. One minute before an inflation re re reading, not good. Just before an earnings announcement, not good. Just before a big central bank meeting, it's not going to go too well. Technical analysis can work when the majority of the market believes in it. So make sure it's obvious. Time frame and risk management key. Journaling can help us. Goal setting is important for growth and progress. But also be careful not to do too much analysis. Okay. Look, we'll uh, we'll just pause there. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at the Q&A just to see if there are any specific questions. If you do need to head off, because I appreciate we're sort of at the back end of the hour, feel free to do that. I'm just going to pop in my email address uh, now for people. It's sam at, or samno at etoro.com. Thank you so much for the, the feedback. It, it means a lot to, to me and, and to Matty to receive that. Um, and also uh, the team that helped put all this together. Uh, the same link you watched, you can uh, click on, you can watch as many times as you want. Uh, a reminder, feel free to, to leave feedback elsewhere. Um, it, it, uh, it's always good for, for Matty and I to see that. Um, send me a message on Twitter, email is more than happy to to have a look at if you do just want a chart looked at twitter is the best place uh for for me to do that as well uh i'm just going to pop the digest and invest page on the shared screen now um you've got education at the top so you can go to the etoro academy and if you scroll down you'll see the courses here uh there and you can scroll down and sign up for those watch recording register 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 uh so you can see all of those there as well um we we can't give the slides out uh unfortunately it's obviously toro property but i mean you can watch as many times as you want screenshot that kind of thing so I mean, that's, that's that's what we can do um javier the link for the recording is is here uh if you click on the academy link i'll pop that in there again for you uh there and also i'm gonna pop my twitter in as well and by the way if you miss any of these links you can go back and watch the recording and there's also the live chat so you can see all of that as well here's my twitter for you the only thing i would just say about my twitter is i do get a little bit carried away uh about arsenal sometimes so uh you just have to ignore that but I, most of the time most of what i post is is market related um you can see just if we go back to last week uh i talked you know about different market levels here and you know areas to be aware of and and, and so on but look guys we'll uh we're going to wrap it there for today sorry mervin I knew there'd be a couple of Tottenham fans here, but my brother supports Tottenham. So actually I don't mind them too much. Uh, but look, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you all have uh, a great rest of your Wednesday. I know some of you it's uh, morning, some of you it's afternoon, some of you it's evening, uh, but I'll be back next week. Fundamental analysis. I uh, hope you can join live. No worries if not, uh, but take care everyone. Have a good rest of your day and week. <laughs>